thing, but even so, there's no question in my mind that it is political, primarily. It has political objectives. There is politically devised strategy behind it. And it all has as one objective. All these different groups with all of their grievances have one objective, and that's tearing down this country and transforming it. And the thing that we've done now, we've elected somebody who has this frame of mind. We have elected somebody, president, who wants to do all this, who carries these grievances. I just, the, the president, just the other day, what did he say? That we, uh, this country's deeply rooted in racism? Well, okay, fine. That's not helpful. A, everybody knows that. What the president is saying is we have made the progress. Now, he did give a bit of a pee into it, but not nearly enough to overcome the original claim that we're deeply rooted in racism and implication clear that we haven't done nearly enough. And that simply isn't true, particularly when it is patently obvious that no matter what is done, it doesn't even matter. There's no gratitude, there's no thanks. The same complaints, the same whining, and now we just keep creating more and more victims. And you know what happens with that? Do you remember the days where people said, no, no, I refuse to play the victim. I am not going to play the victim. It was, a, it was a, uh, an attitude that was scorned to be a victim. Today, it's a badge of honor to be a victim. Health Matters. People with severe kidney disease, also known as kidney failure, need some form of kidney replacement therapy to survive. The most common form in the United States is hemodialysis. Dr. Katherine Myers with the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases explains hemodialysis. It is a procedure that requires access to blood vessels so that blood is actually removed from the patient, is uh, then treated in a dialysis machine, and then returned. Dr. Meyer says that there are different ways for physicians to set up what is called an access for hemodialysis. For more information, visit www.nih.gov. Health Matters is produced by the National Institutes of Health, part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Health Matters. The National Institutes of Health is launching a new drug development pipeline. There exists a gap today between the early part of the scientific research needed to develop drugs to the clinical trials that are eventually done. Dr. Alan Guttmacher at the National Human Genome Research Institute says only if preclinical work is successful can a potential treatment move to clinical trials in patients. Unfortunately, the specifically intends to stimulate research collaborations. For details, visit www.nih.gov. Health Matters is produced by the National Institutes of Health, part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. On the next episode of Recipes for Disaster. So we've got our neighbor Paul coming over tonight for a barbecue, which is why I prepared a delicious lemon rosemary steak marinade from my special collection of old family recipes. To make sure the steaks are extra, extra, extra tender, I left them marinating out on the counter overnight, just like Nana used to. Maria may mean well, but without food safety, it never ends well. Always thaw or marinate foods in the refrigerator at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Or you could make your friends and family really sick. Maria's neighbor Paul didn't think twice about the steak he ate until he was presenting his company's financial forecast to the board. That's when a sudden bout of food poisoning made it explicitly clear that profits weren't the only thing on the rise. Oh. Watch Recipes for Disaster at foodsafety.gov. You'll learn the right steps as Maria does everything wrong. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Act Council. Airman Walsh is planning a vacation for him and his wife and is calculating his expenses. Okay, annual salary minus expenses and work.
$1,800 short. Honey, we're not going to be able to take that vacation this year. we got to make some drastic cuts. Let me figure this out. One per day times 549 times 365 equals $2,003.85 a year up in smoke. It's never too late to quit smoking. Inquire about tobacco cessation classes. Ask your medical professional. Let's get started, shall we? Okay. Today okay. we're discussing the book, What to Expect When You Don't Know What to Expect. So, what did you think? You know what? I'm going to say I didn't think it was too helpful. Hmm. When I was a new mom, I learned about the Family Advocacy Playgroup. You know, I have to agree. Right? You know, I went there when we had our first baby, and they were great. We got lots of advice, totally. lots of support. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine, but what about the book? Uh, it was okay. But with Family Advocacy, you always know what to expect, which is just a lot of help. Family Advocacy. Promoting healthy relationships. Microphone, brand new week of broadcast excellence. Your phone calls coming up as they always are, 800 282 2882, if you want to be on the program. Yeah, it used to be that it was uh, a matter of scorn to be a victim. Nobody wanted to be a victim because victims whined and they complained and uh, blamed others for their plight. It, uh, it was a stigma. And, and that's why, not that long ago, you were probably remember people running around refusing to play the victim. In fact, it was almost valorous to not be the victim, but today it's the exact opposite. To be a victim is to be a hero. To be a victim is to be some sort of massive fighter for justice and integrity. And I'll tell you what happens. And we're living it. We're right in the middle of it. I don't care. Take your favorite group. Pick any group you want that has become fully victimized. They are fully enmeshed in victimology, and where they live is the victimhood. And it's gotten to the point now where anything that is said contrary to the contentions made by the victims is considered to be an attack on the victims. The victims in our culture, I also call the offended. And there are people that are offended by, you name it, secondhand smoke, offended by words they hear, radio, TV, whatever. They're everywhere. And if you, if you don't bow down and try to accommodate every little whining, moaning complaint, then you are judged to be attacking them. This manifests itself in number. You know our biggest victim in the country is right now is Barack Obama. And he plays it to the hilt. He's the biggest victim we've got. And if there's any criticism of Barack Obama, why, it is considered to be an attack. It is considered to be an attack rooted in racism. And all of this is designed to shut down. Legitimate or otherwise, it's designed to shut down disagreement, shut down debate, you name it. It's designed to intimidate.
to try to come up with uh, solutions to various problems. And that was just a cover for what really went on. The mayor got fooled by it, but uh, some people that were in these meetings have told National Review Online what really happened in there was that the Justice Department was asking attendees if they know how to recognize the signs of white privilege. And if they know how to deal with white privilege. And if they didn't know how to recognize the signs, the Justice Department told them what the signs of white privilege are, how you can spot it. And the Department of Justice then gave them guidelines on how to behave and how to react to white privilege. So what was everybody thought the DOJ going in there trying to mollify things and get answers? dig deep and get to the truth, they were going in throwing gasoline on the flames. Hoping for a bigger fire. By telling the red, yeah, you guys got all kinds of white privilege going on here, Ferguson, and let me tell you how to spot it. Eric, Eric Holder's Justice Department. This is not unifying, it's not problem solving, it's exacerbating, and it's using people. And it is, it is encouraging anger. It's promoting anger and division and all these things, and it's keeping primarily all these people, Democrat voters in perpetuity, is the primary objective of this. This country is over 230 years old, and this past weekend we've had to listen to people all over the place act as though not one thing has even been tried to deal with this root racism plaguing America, and that simply isn't the case, because you see, the victims in this current culture can never be wrong. The offended, the victims, are always right, and if you do not count out to it, you are considered to be attacking them, and attacking a victim, boy, that's just mean, because victims, by definition, are 